Life Management Science Labs would like to acknowledge that we live and produce this podcast on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people. We'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands of our listeners and our international colleagues. We'd like to thank and pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Hello everyone and welcome to Work in Progress, the personal productivity science insights podcast produced by LMSL, the Life Management Science Labs. We are champions of life management science, providing structured insights informed by science and inspired by practice on key aspects of conscious living. Each week we bring you scientific and practical insights on each element with expert knowledge of professionals in the field. I am your host Joanna, let's get started. Hi guys, welcome back to Work in Progress, where we talk all things productivity. I am your host, Joanna, and today we've got a really great episode lined up. So no surprise here, we're going to be talking about the different ways you can take control over your time and productivity with our guest, Julie Davis. Now, Julie is a productivity coach specializing in productivity training, helping businesses and leaders achieve excellence in their life. I could go on, but I'll leave that to Julie herself. Hi, Julie. How are you? Hi, Joanna. I'm very well. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Of course. It's great to have you here with us. Um, You've had such a multifaceted professional life. Before we start, would you like to introduce yourself with a bit about who you are and what it is you do? Sure. Um, My... My previous life, I was an educator. So uh, for almost 20 years, I taught um, here in the, in, in the States. I taught high school and college English and public speaking and theater and um, took a pause. And when I came back, I had really realized that there was a need for especially business women to have... Um, to get some balance back in what they were doing. There was so much trying to juggle all the things and work, life, kids, you know, all everything that they were trying to do. And they weren't really growing their businesses how they wanted to grow them. And so I saw an opportunity because um, I figured out that I'm not wired like most people. And I'm very good at um, planning, prioritizing and implementing and and sort of discriminating between what is important and what isn't. I guess that's prioritizing. But anyhow, I because of my teaching background, was able to dig in, write curriculum, write speeches, and do some different things to help um, really bring these women into a different space than they'd been operating in. And so I've I've worked with hundreds of people and talked to thousands of groups and. Um, it's been a phenomenal journey and really getting people to to shift at a very foundational level the way that they are operating so that they can feel more calm and really grow intentionally and have a very intentional good life as well. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I think it's, we're so lucky to have you here with all your wealth of knowledge. Um, speaking of like business women, I know that you've launched Unstuck. Um, would you like to tell us a bit more about that program? Yeah, I have a six month program called the Unstuck. Unstuck the program because I also have Unstuck the event. <laughs> so I have like a three day <laughs> event that I run as well with Unstuck. But um, Unstuck is all about how do you stop spinning your wheels and how do you get super intentional and into action rather than just feeling like you're either in that space of inertia of inaction or you're just slogging along. And so what we do in there is we dig into this habit of proactivity. So how, how do you problem solve and plan for your business in a very strategic way and not just sort of throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks And then we also dig into your values and your vision and how do those align and then also and align with your goals as well. And then the final thing we do is dig into people's habits around time so that all the things we've uncovered and discovered, we can now create space and time to implement and to make things happen in a almost in a fast forward fashion. So that is in a nutshell, what the Unstuck program is all about. And we do it in a, in a matter of six months. 
Wow, that's really great and so inspiring. How long has that been going on for now? Um, ah, let's see. Seven, seven years I've been running that program. Wow. Um, my business is in its eighth year. And there have been many iterations of it along the way, but the, I finally settled on this one. And then I run a couple of six-week courses a lot within the program, but the six-week courses, anybody can come and join at any time that I'm offering them. So we run Solve Unsolvable Problems, it's called, and we run Prioritize with Power, which is the one all around your habits around time. Amazing. I think we're in really great hands today then. Um, I would love our listeners to get to know a bit more about you. So I'm just going to ask you a few more personal questions, um, sure. starting with if you have a favorite book at all or any book recommendations that you could share with us. Oh, my goodness. Well, OK, so we'll start with my favorite business book, kind of um, that I my go to book is called um, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Love it. And also The One Thing by Jerry Ke by Gary Keller um, are both amazing books around time and your habits around time and, and other and other habits that you have. And then if you were to ask me, I read a lot of fiction. And so I have a lot of favorites. Um, I would say the best book I've read in the last year, let's go with that one is probably The Personal Librarian, which is a historical fiction around the personal librarian of J.P. Morgan um, way back when uh, here in the States. And it's a phenomenal read if you're a fiction reader or if, and if you like history also. So, Wow, I'm definitely a fiction reader. Haven't <laughs> read too much like historical fiction, but I'll add that one to my list. Um, moving into movies, do you watch movies a lot? Do you have a favorite? I do watch movies a lot. I would say my favorite movie of all time is probably, it's an oldie, is Field of Dreams with Kevin Costner and Ray oh. Liotta. It's a, it's a fantastic movie. And I'm, my son is 20 now and I made him watch it a couple of years ago and he's <laughs> like, he, he, you know, I dragged him to the TV and he, we finished it and he's like, that was so good. I had to tell all my friends. And so it's a, <laughs> it's a kind of, it's a timeless movie. It's a really timeless movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. That one has been on my list for a while. I'd say like a year now and I just haven't gotten around to watching it, but I think I will get around to that now that you've mentioned how great it is. <laughs> and podcasts, I would love to ask you about that because we're on a podcast at the moment. Uh, Absolutely. Do you listen to podcasts at all? I don't listen to a lot of podcasts. However, I do have a favorite. It is um, with John Lee Dumas. It's called Entrepreneur on Fire. Uh, it's a pretty good one that I I quite enjoy what he does. He's changed the format a little bit. He does a longer format now, interviewing um, pretty high end entrepreneurs, and it's um and he talks a lot about time as well. But he's uh, he's pretty phenomenal, and I enjoy his podcast quite a bit. Yeah, amazing. And do you find that you take a lot of like what you learn from reading like non fictional books and like listening to podcasts like this into the work you do as well? Oh, yeah. And I read, I, I subscribe to the Harvard um, Business Review and I read Inc. Magazine and I, I read a lot of articles um, in entrepreneur.com and, and all of those. And so I'm constantly reading and researching and I bring all of that in um, to, to what I train in, what I teach and, and how I operate my business too. Yeah, amazing. That sounds awesome. And I know you've got some amazing hobbies and pastimes that you love to <laughs> indulge in. Please share I some do. of them with us. I do. Um, most favorite for me is my outdoor activities. I am a, a lifelong skier, so I love downhill skiing. I love um, hiking, golfing, tennis, Um really just about anything that you can do outside. I, I really, really love doing. And, um, and then, you know, on a cozy day, reading always and movie, I, everything we've already talked about the reading and the movies are, are big time, big things for me. But if, if you talk, if you ask me what 
fills my cup up the most, it would be skiing and, and hiking. Yeah, beautiful. I went skiing um, in Vermont in December and I thought that was absolutely fabulous. Um, do you have like a favorite spot you love That's to go awesome. skiing? Um, I do. I love Steamboat Springs in Colorado. And yes. um, if you skied in the east, you haven't skied in the west. So next time you should come all the way west so that you can ski um, some different snow. It's very different. Um, but Steamboat Springs is by far my favorite area in Colorado. And then I I really enjoy in Utah, an area called Alta is a really um, oh. fantastic place to ski. Yeah, awesome. I will definitely add that to my bucket list. Um, <laughs> I've recently gone into skiing a little bit, so very exciting to hear that you love that as well. Um, I think we're ready to jump into some of our interview questions. So <laughs> the first one I've got for you is, over the course of your experience, how would you personally define personal productivity? Personal productivity, how would I define it? Personal productivity is really about doing the most important things and spending the time to actually um, get through them and not just put your hands on a lot of different things, like spend time digging into and getting through one thing at a time. And um, I, I think a lot of people mistake being busy for being productive. And they're like, but I'm getting so much done, but they're not really getting like, yeah, they're check, 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 checking things off their list, but they're not really finishing or getting to the things that matter the most because they're those things are hard or take longer and our brain wants to take the easy path <laughs> it's, it's it's actually human nature that our brain wants to take the easy path and and put those hard things off and yeah. so it's productivity is really about are you digging into the things that matter most the things that are going to drive you to be better um, and to be bigger and to be more excellent. And are, how do you make, and making space to make sure that those things are happening. Yeah, for sure. I definitely can say I'm guilty of doing the whole, let's just do as much as we can and call that productive. How do people escape that sort of mindset of the more I do, that means the more productive I've been. Um, I think it's a, it's really a, a space where they start to feel like um, they're never going to be done and there's never time to get to the things that they actually want to get to. Yeah. It's, it's almost like you have to reach that line or that breaking point and be like, all right, you know what? Something has to give because I can't keep going like this and I'm getting nowhere. And so to me, that's where the awareness happens. Um, and, and people start working, if, if you're talking about business, um, they start working into the night or into the weekends in, in order to try to get to things. But even still, they don't know how to move those bigger things to the, to the top. And so um, it's, it's really that real. I think like anything, Joanna, really, we have to reach that realization where we're like, oh my God, I can't, I can't anymore. I've reached complete bandwidth <laughs> and there's still so much more. And so how do I make a change? Yeah, for sure. And I think that is so important to have the awareness to be able to identify as well. Um, and is there anything else you think people get wrong when it comes to personal productivity? Um, I, I think that, yeah. And I think we're going to address this a little bit later, possibly, but I'll, I'll throw it in right now, um, is that people, there's a couple of things. They don't, they don't take breaks. So they think if they schedule back to back to back, that's better. And they're going to get more done. And really they're depleting themselves more and have less energy and less brain power than they would if they were to, to refresh. Um, throughout the day, throughout the week, whatever that looks like. Um, the other thing is that they are trying to squeeze in 
the things they love or they're trying to even squeeze in family time. They're trying to squeeze in thing, the, the activities that they love. And so then like everything is squeezed, right? Not just the things yeah. for life, but the, like everything feels squeezed. And that's a, it's a huge mistake that people make because they're trying to please everyone. And in doing that, they're not taking care of, of themselves. Yeah, I think what you've just said is like so true and like especially rings very true for myself. I'm sure other people listening can agree as well. But we live in such like a fast paced environment in society that there's almost, would you say, like this competitiveness to compete with everyone else and what they're doing and try and keep up with the busyness of life? Yeah, it's almost like there's a there's a badge of honor with being, oh, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Oh, I'm so busy. I've been so busy. And yeah. it, it's like, I just want to look at people and be like, everyone's busy. <laughs> like, yeah. So what what are you going to do about it? And stop saying that because we're all busy. Like it's no longer an excuse and it's no longer a um, a, a badge of honor to be busy like we're all busy and technology has made us busier because we're everybody has access to everybody and everything all the time right so it's not going to get any better but we can we can certainly mitigate and make decisions and set boundaries and so yeah i think this busyness culture it's not going to get any better it's a matter of where are you willing to say no and where are you willing to say not right now? It doesn't even have to be no. It could be not right now. Um, and start taking care of yourself and those around you. Yeah. And how can we stop thinking that saying no or like not right now isn't a bad thing? <laughs> um, I think that, I, I think especially women have a hard time with this. I don't, I don't know that I don't, I don't see that men have as hard of a time with it because we don't want to hurt people's feelings. Right. And we, um, yeah. <laughs> we want to take care of everyone and, and yeah. we'll, and we'll always sacrifice ourselves in order to help someone else. And I think what it really comes down to Joanna is, is permission, self-permission, or even permission. I'm giving you all who are watching this permission. <laughs> to say, I love that. To say, you know, I don't have time for that right now, but but could we meet next Thursday or help them and say, I, I don't have time to take care of that now. Um, is there someone else that could that could help you with it? So that we become not all accessible and not not the only go-to person that that some people have and even letting people know in the business world or in work that hey i'm going to be checking emails like two times a day and i will get back to you but i'm not going to get back to you within three minutes of you sending me an email or even a text i'll get back to you but taking charge of that is so freeing and, but it's setting up the boundaries ahead of time. I think that's where we lose the guilt part of it. And, and the per, getting the permission to set the boundary is that we set it up ahead of time. It's not like I all of a sudden just cut everybody off on my text messages and <laughs> wasn't answering. It was like, hey, just to let you know, I'm going to be answering text messages a few times a day. If you don't hear from me right away and you really need to get a hold of me, call me. If you don't hear from me right away, just know I'll get back to you in the next few hours. Um because most of the time people don't need to hear back from you right away. They just need it. They're getting it off of their chest and now you're carrying it. And so if we can set it, if we can set those parameters ahead of time and let people know, Hey, this is how I'm going to be trying to start operating. And I just wanted to let you know, it, it takes the, it takes the pressure off of us and lets us set the boundary and takes the frustration off of others if they're used to us responding a certain way yeah that was awesome I think I really needed to hear that I hope a lot of other people needed to hear that that was amazing so thank you for that um moving into our next question I know we chatted a bit about this before but how would you define time management yeah so this is a 
some of you are not going to like me much for saying this, but there, but time management is um, not a thing. It's, we are not able to manage. This is something that I say a lot, Joanna, is that we aren't, we aren't managing time. We can't save time. We can't manage time because the truth is you have the same 24 hours that I have. We have the same 24 hours that Oprah has, that Beyonce has, that, you know, Jeff Bezos has, like we all have the same 24 hours in a day. So there's nothing to manage there. What we can manage is our tasks. We can manage what we just talked about, our boundaries, and we can manage our goals and we can manage our calendar, but we're not going to manage time. Like people are like, can I, I save so much time? I'm like, what are you, how are you saving now? Are you sticking it in the freezer? You think that you're going to pull it out and defrost a few hours later? Like what's, what is that? And so if we can think about, I'm going to manage my calendar, I'm going to like time is so it's, it's finite, right? Time is finite. We can't manage it, but we can manage a calendar. We can manage a goal. We can manage a task. We can manage our boundaries. We can manage ourselves. There's a whole lot of power there. Time management, feel you, there's finite time and it feels almost like we've given the power off to time. Yeah, awesome. How did you come to deduce that like time management isn't really a thing, but it's more about the habits that you build. Um, I think it really happened over, over the years that I've been in my business. I started talking to like about this probably about four or five years ago. I started talking about it in this way because I felt like so many people were talking about time management and I started thinking about it and I'm like, I can't. I can't really manage anything with time, but, and, and as I started working with people, they're like, I have such a time management problem. And really what it came down to is they had a calendar issue and they had a task management issue. They didn't really have a, cause we have, there is so much time. Everyone has enough time. If you think about it, you are, you think you're so busy and that you're so booked. And then some curveball comes at you and you have to deal with like, let's say the um, basement floods, you have to deal with that and still run your life. And somewhere you find the time to shop back and to call someone to come in and fix the flooding and someone else to come in and clean the carpet. And like you found time somewhere, right? So it's a matter of we can, if we're controlling our calendar, we can really take a hold of our our own response to to time and constraints around it so there's always plenty of time everyone out there there's plenty of time it's just how you are organizing it and how you are responding to the tasks that you've assigned yourself and the goals that you have and how much time you're spending on them and the calendar and how you're organizing that calendar so really yeah. joanna it, it, it evolved because the people generally come to me about their time. They come to me because they're so overwhelmed and their calendar is out of control. And so really it's not about time management. It's about let's dig into the calendar and figure out what the heck is going on there. And it, yeah. so it really started with a calendar management thing and which turned into task management, which turned into goal management. Yeah, I love that so much. I'm not going to lie. I'm literally writing down personal notes <laughs> as we go as well because I think this is just so relevant and I'm honestly getting so much out of this. So thank you already. Uh, my next question is, how does managing our habits then help personal productivity or influence personal productivity? That's a really great question. So a lot of what I teach, I, I alluded to earlier, I have this course called Prioritize with Power, and it's all about our habits around time. Yeah. So um, another book that I didn't mention that's really good is called The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. If you haven't read her work, it's she also has a TED Talk. If you're not a reader, look up Mel Robbins and her five second rule TED Talk. Um, but this is really her stuff is really about ha being habitual about things. So is James Clear in Atomic Habits. But um, if we are just getting, if we're hitting the snooze button for hours 
or if we're just getting up and hitting the ground running, we have no routine. So if, if you guys can think about habit, habit is born out of routine. And routine is born out of being being super intentional and mindful about what you're doing for a while. And then it becomes a routine and then it becomes a habit. And they say it takes 28 days to create a habit, which it does. But then it's, um, I don't have the, I don't have it on top of my head. It's really about 60 days to solidify a habit, like to ground it in there. Um, so if we can, if we can get really mindful about routines, those routines will turn into habits. And if we want to add a hat, let's say that we wanted to add a habit of, um, let's say we wanted to add a habit of, of going through and prioritizing our to-do list on any given day, instead of yeah. just check it off from the top to the bottom. And every day you get up, you brush your teeth, you drink a glass of water and you turn on the coffee pot and then, you know, whatever else. So now what we do is, um, James Clear calls it habit stacking. So now what I want to do is I want to create a new habit. So I'm going to add, when I turn on the coffee pot, I'm going to grab my task list. I'm going to write it down and then I'm going to start and I'm going to decide what are the, what is the order of things for today? The order of importance. So I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to attach it to something I already do. And, um, and that's how we start creating things in our routine. What I want to be really clear about is it's really important to have a plan of attack. And um, we, we can talk about it a little bit later if you want. But in your calendar, if you create your calendar with these blocks in it for certain things, I don't, I don't, run, a, I don't run a rigid calendar. I run a very fluid calendar. So I have a plan and even habit can be the plan. And then things come up. I, I can move things around almost like a slide puzzle. So if I'm going to, if I have to add this thing in, I can actually move this over here. Like there's space. Yeah. So would you say that it's about having flexibility around our schedules? Absolutely. And I, I, I want to iterate because your question was really about habit. How do we create, how are we creating a habit? that the habit is in the planning, but then we've got flexibility within the plan. Yeah, beautiful. And for our overachievers out there, how do we juggle multiple tasks and responsibilities while staying on track and managing deadlines at the same time? Like there's so much going on. And for people like myself and others who just love to do so much, how do we go about it? There is, I teach a whole day on um, the fact that now you're going to really hate me. You're like, Julie, now you told me there's no such thing as time management. And I'm now going to tell you that multitasking is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Just debunking everything. Yeah. Um, if you, if you dig into multitasking, what is, what it's being called now is task switching and you actually lose 33% of your day to multitasking if you are if you are switching tasks if you are switching windows if you are checking your email if you are checking your phone your phone we are on average checking our phones 96 times an hour wow think about that even if you're just picking it up and like looking at it to see if there's a message or to see what time it is that's 96 times and if you that's think cool. about when you don't have your phone with you cuz you accidentally left it somewhere behind how many times you reach for it and it's not there, you'll probably really understand that 96 times. But we're, lo so let's say you're working on something, Joanna, and you jump to either another window or you jump to check email or you jump to check a text message, then you answer it or you go down some little rabbit hole and then you come back to what you were working on if you come back to what you were working on. And then you're like, where was I? What was I doing? And it takes us a really long time to get back to it. So by jumping, we lose about 20 minutes by the time we come back. And if you think about that, 20 minutes of an hour is 30% of your time. And so yeah. if here's the, here's, here's all I can tell you it, it, in a, in this short time that we have is number one, 
turn off. If you're working on something and you really want to work on it, turn off your notifications, close all your windows and work on only what you're working on. Turn off your phone, put it in another room if you don't need it. The further away your phone is from you, the more productive you are. Yeah. There's all kinds of research about that. Like there's more productive if it's turned upside down, you're more productive if it's across the room and you're more productive if it's out of the room. So, yeah. um, so in order to stop the task switching, it's really important that you just, you you just remove all temptation yeah. and then set a timer. I'm going to work on this for 20 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever it might be. And at the end of that time, you might not be done, but what you can do is you give yourself permission to be done and you say, all right, I'm going to make a note. Here's where I finished. Next time I pick this up, this is where I'm going to start. So you don't spend 20 minutes figuring out where you were and what's next. Yeah. And you figure out what, what day and what time you're going to work on it again. So now your brain can release it because it knows you're coming back and you know exactly where you are. Yeah. And, and it's an easy way to stop mold. And you can do this. I mean, you could do it for 10 minutes if you wanted to just check email for 10 minutes or whatever it is. We just find ourselves, we are so distractible and it's a, we are a, we've always been distractible, but with technology, it's, it's enhanced now and it's become harder than ever to be focused for long periods of time. And so yeah. if you can make the decision, a very conscious decision that you're going to work on something for X number of minutes, then you give yourself permission. And, and if things enter your brain, which they will, you're like, Oh, I got to go get this at the store. Or, oh, I got to make sure I check that email or send that proposal or check that or respond to that person. I keep a little notebook next to my desk and I thank my brain for the thought. I write it down. It's not a multitask. It's like, thanks for the reminder. I'll write that down over here and I'll do it later. And then I can stay on what I'm doing. Yeah. I don't have to go jump out of my chair and go do that thing. Or I don't have to open that email and send that email right then. And so... If you keep just a little notepad, it can make a huge difference as well. I'm just trying to give you little tips on how yeah. to stop the madness <laughs> of multitasking. Yeah. yeah, amazing. No, like the amount of times where I've been on my phone and I told myself, let's do this. And then I'm on another app and then I'm on another app and then I'm down a rabbit hole for like the next 20 minutes and I've forgotten what right. I was supposed to do. Like What you were doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, so where was I supposed to be? Um, <laughs> so that is just so relevant. And do you recommend to people that they have like a little journal or like a little way that they can note down things but not feel like they have to do them immediately? Yes, absolutely. Either have a, a running little list by your desk. I have... Um, I have this spiral like notebook that's it's like half a half a page. It's tiny. It's like this this big. And it yeah. just I can just jot stuff down in it. Um the other thing that I have some people do is they just have a notebook um next to them. I do it too, like full of just notes and things, and I can go back and refer to those thoughts if I need to. Um, I have one client, she's awesome. She just writes the date and she just has this running book next to her and she can go back to the date of things when she met with people or when she thought about something or whatever. So it's, um, it can be really powerful and it's not a distraction. It's like your, it's your little record of, of the thoughts. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. That's such a, such a great way of putting it. And do you think it's true that not one size fits all when it comes to finding a method of planning that works for an individual? Yes, I do. Yeah. And I think you and I, I, I think what I teach is pretty universal. And I recognize that all of us are different. All of us have different lives. All of us have different businesses. All of us have different elements of things brewing around us. And so if you can take pieces and parts and, and doctor it to however it might work for you, absolutely. There is not a cookie cutter solution to, to how we operate because everyone's brain is different too. Yeah, for sure. And would like, would you come across situations where stress and like anxiety plays a big role when it comes to people feeling overwhelmed and how would you go about tackling that with someone? So, there's, 
I think that that what you're describing is attached to perfectionism. And so it's again comes down to you know, I'm I'm not a psychologist first of all. <laughs> so, yeah. But um I I do think that there's this piece of again permission that it's better to have imperfect action than perfect in action. And so the anxiety and the stress, if you, if you can train yourself to, and I, and I talk to my clients about this all the time, it is, nobody expects anything to be perfect and nothing ever is going to be perfect. And if you give yourself permission to put something out there and then know that you can tweak it later, it's, everything is fixable and everything is tweakable and there's always going to be something else ca- that can be done if you if you read anything about you know these master artists um about van gogh about monet about you know any of these these old artists and even even artists now or authors they never feel like their piece of art or their book is done like there there's always something else they could change or add or shift or whatever at some point we have to put it out there or we're 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 paralyzed and so if you give yourself the permission that you know what first of all sometimes good enough is good enough and i'm not saying you're not excellent it's just not perfect excellent isn't perfect excellent is is above average right excellent is the best I could do at that moment. And so sometimes good enough is good enough, not saying that it's below par, just saying it's not perfect. And sometimes in order to get more feedback and more information, we have to put it out there so that we can make the tweaks and we can make the adjustments that we need to make in order to make it better and better and better. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's a really great way of putting it. A lot of people strive for perfectionism because they think that's what they're supposed to attain in order to be successful. But it's really good to sort of break that down and realize that there's so much more to it than just being, you know, 100% flawless. So that's a really great awareness to have. And how would you suggest that people self-reflect on their time management and, you know, come up with strategies that actually work for them? Um, I think it's really important that if you are looking at your habits around time, the first thing I have a lot of people do um, is number one, look at their calendar. And what they will find a lot of times is their calendar looks pretty clean, but the tasks that they're trying to do in a day are Un, it's unmanageable. And yeah. So, and what happens is they start getting into the tasks and then they miss the things that are actually on their calendar. And so um, the first thing a lot of times I have people do is look at their calendar and look at their task list and, and then record what they do in a day, almost like a food diary. Um, you don't have to write down every minute of everything that you did. If every... Um, 60 to 90 minutes, you pause and you write down everything and you're honest with yourself, everything that you did in that 60 to 90 minutes. Oh, I checked email. Oh, I checked email like three times. And I, you know, if if they can figure out where the time is going, they will probably find, I'm trying to remember what I, I must've been listening to Darren Hardy one time. And he was talking about when he started Um, He was a realtor, I think, in his 20s. And he started tracking his time and figured out that he was really spending like a third of his day working and two thirds of his day wasting time, (laughs) basically, (laughs) which you'll find if you start tracking exactly like what were you doing in that last 60 minutes? You'll be like, oh, oh, I, oh, I also did this and I also did that and like we start getting really honest about yeah. how we're spending our time. Um, and then Joanna, the biggest thing I can tell you, so now you've dug in and you can get sort of a picture of yourself. When it comes to the task list, 
I have, um, my terminology is the big three. If you can choose from your task list in a day, because your task list will never end. Like there's always one more thing to do. Like you'll leave, some people will even put stuff on there and cross it off because they did it, but it wasn't on the list. <laughs> my perfectionists do that. But um, if you can look at that list and ask yourself, like what, if I could only do three of these today, what would they be? Yeah. And start there, do those. And then if there's extra time at the end of the day, or you feel like napping around two o'clock in the afternoon, then do those little things that take no brain power and check them off. Like check, 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 check. That only take a few seconds each. Yeah. Um, but if you can ask yourself, if I could only do three of these today, what would they be? Now you started to manage those. Now yeah. you started to actually be mindful and intentional about the tasks rather than either top to bottom or what's easiest on here. Because the easiest things are generally not the most important things. Yeah, for sure. Right. That's that's a really great way of going about it and like actually managing your time. Would you point people towards any other sort of resources if they're looking to improve their productivity? I know your website is like a gold mine for this as well, but it is. It yeah. is. It <laughs> yeah. has a lot. There there is a freebie on my website to like my daily productivity sheet that they could get at my website. But um I I really think if you if if you're if time is really a thing for you and you think that is the number one issue for you, I would read Gary Keller's The One Thing. It it could change everything for you and the way that you look at, at everything. Yeah. Um, it really can make a humongous difference in how you are looking at what you're doing in any given day and how you're looking at your at your tasks. Yeah. Amazing. I think reading is such a great way to also do this. Mm -hmm. um, and especially for those of us who love reading, um, yeah. we can definitely do that. So that's awesome. And I and I know there's all kinds of planners out there. There's all kinds of tools that way. Um, it, but if you're not changing, you're, you're not changing at that habit level. That planner will work for a week or two, a month or two. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I used to. What happened to that thing? <laughs> so we are, we are trying to see what will work, but we're not changing at the habit level. And that's why we aren't succeeding at feeling less overwhelmed and getting a, getting a grasp on what we're trying to do in a, in a day. Yeah. So people really need to get in that mindset of actually wanting to change their habits as opposed to like a superficial level of, oh, let's just get better at being productive. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's amazing. And how can people actually like maximize their productivity? I know this is, I think it can be a bit complex sometimes this idea of maximizing something, but what's the mm -hmm. best way to go about that? So we look at maximizing productivity. I, I, I go back to this idea of goal management. So if you're maximizing your productivity, you're, you need to start with that. You need to be, the seven habits of highly effective people. You need to begin with the end in mind. You need to be, it's habit number three. Begin with the end of mind. Because if you have that goal and then you break that goal down into um, bite-sized pieces that have due dates to them, like let's say I have a, a goal for December, then I'm going to break that goal down into what do I need to do by the end of third quarter or second quarter, first quarter in order to be on track for that goal. And then what activities do I need to engage in in quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four in order to reach that goal? And so really your activities, your tasks, your um, what you're doing on any given day or in any, any given week really is all coming back to the goal. Everything has to come back to the goal. And if your big three aren't related to the goal, then something has gotten off track. It doesn't mean that everything I do is related to that because like I said, I'm taking time for myself. I, I'm, I'm not working on Tuesdays and I'm not working on the weekends and, and I'm engaging in my life. Um, but when I am, when I am working and I am working my calendar, everything is 
going back to those goals. And then, and then there are spaces in my calendar where I can check off all those little, like I need to make a doctor's appointment and I need to go to the dentist and I need, (laughs) I need to, we need to do, I need to run to the post office. I need to go grocery shopping, all those things. There will be space for that, but we've got to, we've got to get a handle on instead of trying to do it all, Joanna, like let's pick the most important things and let the rest go. Like it's not that important. We've, we've made it important and yeah. we're the ones in control of that. Nobody else. Yeah. Amazing. I think that's, that's really great. And <laughs> something that we need to remind ourselves of more often. So let's move into the more practical. I know we've already been talking a lot about that, but let's hear about it from like a more personal perspective. So what do you use Julie to improve your time management skills or your habits? Let's say. Um, on a on a daily basis, I am I'm using my own tools. <laughs> really, I yeah. use the I use Google Calendar um, for my calendaring, and I have my my own my daily productivity planner that is a supplement to that. And so that planner is where I I do a brain dump, and then I and I use it more I use it more like weekly than daily, but I do a brain dump, and then I figure out what are the most important things. And then where are they going to get done in my calendar? It's not like I'm just going to squeeze them in. I'm going to say, oh, I can do that one at 10. I can spend about a half hour on that other one at 1130, you know, and I'm deciding when I am doing those and engaging in them. And I would say that's the number one thing as well as, um, oh, this is what I really wanted to say also with this. When I am doing my calendar, And this is all about productivity and and calendaring your life and work, whether you have a job or a business or whatever you are doing. Um, The first thing I put in my blank calendar is the things that I want to do for me and with my family. So if I'm not going to work on Tuesdays, that's marked off. If I'm playing tennis on Wednesday mornings, that's marked off. If I'm, you know, whatever I'm doing is all marked off first. If we have a family vacation, we want to take a family vacation. We decide when that is and that's marked off. So I don't end up having havoc in my calendar. Then what are the things, this is my habit, is my my full calendar. What are the things that are, I call non-negotiables and non-negotiables are different definition for other people. For me, a non-negotiable is something that's on the calendar set by somebody else. Like I have a networking meeting the second Wednesday of every month that's not negotiable. That's, that's not in my control when that happens. So that's on the calendar. And that's the, those things are the next things that go on the calendar. Anything that's a a set time and place that somebody else is in charge of that goes on there next. Then it's around, um, when am I going to be doing my coaching? When are my classes? When, you know, does that stuff happen? And so if you guys can see how it backs out, then there's more space than you ever knew. So my own habit, Joanna, in the, in the short answer of your question starts around my blank calendar any given month. And I start filling it in backwards that way. Yeah. Awesome. And do you find that this has become like second nature to you? Oh yeah. And if I find myself totally, I, I am not, I am by no means perfect. And I am very good at this. And I also find myself underwater sometimes or feeling like my hair is on fire. And that's when I know, oh, wait a minute. I need to back up here and look at a like a mock calendar. Let me and then let me see what I can shed, what I can get rid of so I can get back down to my bare bones and feel like I am in control again. Because we start taking on more and more and more. And then all of a sudden we're like, oh, my God, I don't have any. I don't have any time. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I I feel it too and that's when I know and I really believe in in doing that reset every every season. Um because life changes every season in some fashion and work changes every season in some fashion as well. Yeah, and do you find that there are any challenges to this practice you do even though it's become like second nature to you? Um I think like anything I struggle with um, fear of missing out of things, right? So I start taking on more and saying yes to more things. And so the the challenge is continuing to set the boundaries and 
I, I, you know, I still have to manage and I still sometimes have to backpedal and say, I'm really sorry. I overcommitted. I can't come to that. And, um, and just honor my, honor my gut and under honor my, my feelings of overwhelm every now and then. And so it's, it's not forging forward. It's sometimes backpedaling. And so for me, yeah, the challenge is I still do run into those times, those months where I'm like, what, what happened? What happened? And even though it is second nature to me, sometimes it still falls by the wayside because old habits will always rear their ugly heads or, you know, or whatever, or we just, you know, throw caution to the wind and just forget about scheduling and (laughs) and everything's out of control yeah for sure and do you like set up certain times to do this like I know you said like filling in your calendar like do you do this at like the start of the month or a certain period of time um I actually try to do it for a full quarter at a time and then I check in I check in with it every um at least every month if not every couple of weeks I check in with it um otherwise it will fill up beyond what I like it to be. And, um, but quarterly I can look ahead. I set my, um, my calendar that, that, um, my scheduling calendar, I'll set up three months at a time so that people can schedule three months. And so that's, it's kind of like I take a half a day. It doesn't even take me half a day, but I'll set it. I'll be, it'll be on my calendar that it says calendar. And then I work on my scheduling. I work on my actual, my own calendar structure and and rework things yeah awesome and we've now got some questions from our audience that I would love to ask you and I think it really just builds upon what we've been talking about as well so the first one goes like this um how often or like I struggle with prioritizing tasks and managing time effectively what are some practical strategies I could use um, or that you would recommend to individuals to help prioritize their time? And how do I go about doing this? So I want to address, I think the easiest thing to address is the first part of that about prioritizing tasks. Yeah. I think that um, if you can think about how many times at the end of a day or the end of the week, you can say, man, I'm so busy and I have no idea where the time went. I have no idea what I did. I know I did a lot, but I don't really know what I did. Let's think about getting rid of that phrase. So it's um, when you're deciding what to do in a day, if you can come back to this whole idea of like, what are, if I could do three, what would they be? And when I'm choosing the three, so I think the question would be, how do I choose the three, right? Because they're all, they all seem equally important. And the fact is that they're not equally important. Some are more important than others. Um, It's, it's asking is this going to make me feel and know that I accomplished something at the end of the day? That's the first question Yeah. to prioritize. The second question is, um, is this related to my, is it going to move me closer to a goal that I have either for the day, for the week or for the month or for the year? Like, is it moving me closer to my goal? Those, if you can answer those two questions, you'll really get a sense. And, and you could also ask, does it have a hard deadline? Right. So if you can, if you can dig into those questions, you can really decide what needs to move to the top of the list. If your list is still six things long, cut it down to three. I'm, I know this hurts you, some of you. And here's the thing, though. How great is it of that sense of accomplishment to say, man, I had three things on my list and I got all three done? Or you had three things on your list, but you got six done because there were some other things that were still hanging out there. They weren't the top three, but you're like, man, I had three things on my list. And I got six done because I had extra time today because yeah. because when such and so canceled on me, I had this gift of time and I could actually do these other things or something didn't take me as long as I thought. And I did those. So it feels so much better to say I had three and I got six or I had three and I got three. Then I had 10 and I only got three. Yeah. Right. Then we feel like a failure. So we want to feel like a success at the end of the day. So we've got to set ourselves up. Yeah, for sure. And like what I got from that is like setting yourself up for success, not setting yourself up to fail because you've, you know, like reached too far ahead into what you want to do. So that's really great. And I think yeah. 
that's something I will personally start doing. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so that's awesome. And our next question is, that's actually my question, but um, how do I not feel guilty for taking time off to put some things aside and just take time to recharge, like you mentioned at the start of this episode? Mm -hmm. It's something that a lot of people struggle with. And so it's, it's number one, knowing that that stuff will be there when you get back. Number two, the stuff you're leaving for a while doesn't have a deadline for when you're gone. So yeah. nobody knows that you're um, going to do it tomorrow instead of today or, or you know, Tuesday instead of today. Um, the third thing is if you create a routine or a habit around taking some time for yourself and, and Joanna, you could start with an hour. I'm going to an hour, two times a week, I'm going to go take a walk or I'm going to do something. I'm going to read. I'm going to do something that brings me joy and pleasure. And it's just an hour and then I'll come and then I'm going to come back refreshed. And so yeah. now you, your, your mind is starting to know, oh, that feels pretty good. And I'm actually ready to come back to work. Um, because if, if you keep going without, without fueling yourself, as far as fueling your soul, um, then we get to the point of where we're avoiding things or we're shutting down. We're like, you know what? I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so tired. Forget it all. I'm just going to sit here for the whole day and zone out and, and watch mindless television or whatever it might be, you know, whatever, or, or surf, um, the web or play a game or, you know, watch endless videos on TikTok or whatever it might be. Yeah. So everybody has their guilty pleasure, right? So if you can, you can start with the baby steps, like just an hour, a couple times a week. And then, you know what, I'm going to take one day a month one weekday a month and I'm going to go do something that I really love. I had just had a client who she goes, you know what? I've been wanting to go to this exhibit at the Botanic Garden for a couple of months. So she, we, I made her schedule. It took her two and a half weeks to get it on her schedule, but she did it on a Thursday, turned off her phone, went, did it. She's like, it was so amazing and nothing happened while I was gone. Like I was able to come back and engage. Yeah. So if you can find one day a month, one or, or start with a half a day, like I'm going to work until one and from one to five, I'm going to do this other thing. Like I'm going to go fuel myself, take care of myself. So if, if you can, I think it's really about starting small. It's not trying to start, you know, I'm going to take one day off a week, starting next week. It's <laughs> that's not realistic. Right. So baby step it is what I yeah. would say. Awesome. And self-care is so important and so underrated. We just don't think about it too much because it's so caught up in the busyness of our lives. So that's really amazing to hear. And what advice do you have for maintaining a healthy balance between our work and personal life while still while still being productive? Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I think it's really important that you decide what time each day, if you're working from home, um, or if you tend to work long hours at the office, what, depending on, on who you are and what you do, um, it's really making a decision as far as what time you're done working. What time are you done working? If you're at home, are you done at three? Are you done at six? Are you done at five? What time are you done? And, and be done and have a final activity that you do, whether it's sending a final email or just closing your computer, turning it off. Um, decide what time you're done and be done and yeah. um, decide what time you're leaving the office each day and leave the office at that. Like you're leaving. That's, that's the first thing. The second thing is um, try really hard not to work weekends or, or if you need to work on a weekend, then take a day off during the, like you've got to find some time for you or, or you will just fry yourself. You'll just be so, um, unable to be as productive as you might be because you're just burned out and tired and 
feel bogged down by everything. The third thing is going back to what I talked about with your calendaring, put your stuff in first. Put your stuff in first or your family or whatever it is first so that you're taking care of those things that are important in your life and then fill in, then put in, you know, those non-negotiables, then put in your business activities, your, your networking, your, you know, whatever it is. Um, If you want to have time for coffee with friends or with movie nights or whatever like that, put that in and have that, you know, plan spontaneity. (laughs) But um, you've got to, you've got to decide that you're doing it and you've got to actually put it in there or it won't, it, we will let everything else take precedence over it. Yeah, for sure. And the more we've talked, the more I've realized that it's so much about building healthy habits, but also building like healthy traits as well, which ultimately is going to benefit you as an individual. So I've really just gotten that out of what we've talked about, which is awesome. Um, and I'd love to move into our last section that we've got lined up for okay. you today, um, <laughs> which is our open mic. So I'll hand it over to Julie now and you can just talk about whatever you'd like. Um, the floor is all yours. Okay. Well, we um, were talking a little bit before we started and what I, I think I'd really like to talk about is If you haven't figured it out already, one of the things I'm most passionate about and that is a huge part of why people follow me and why people um, hire me is because I am living my life as well as working and growing my business. And I'm, I'm so passionate about you taking time for you to engage in the things that you want to do. I hear so many people say, yeah, I used to hike a lot or I used to love to go paddle boarding or I used to, you know, I used to love to go to the movies. I used to do this thing all the time. And now as I've gotten kids and I've gotten, you know, this business and I've gotten promoted at work and this and that, then all that stuff has started to go away. And that is um, heartbreaking really, if you think about it, because you've let all this other stuff take away from how you fill up your own cup. So if I could say one thing to all of you is going back to even the answer that I gave to Joanna, find two hours a week that you are doing something that's just for you to fill up your cup so that you can be better for everyone else and in every other area of your life. It's just so important. Yeah, for sure. And I even find myself being like, oh, like as young as I am, I've already stopped doing things that I used to do. And I'm like, why have I stopped doing these things? And my excuse is always, oh, I've just gotten busy. Oh, I've just gotten, yeah, (laughs) busy is just always the excuse. And it shouldn't be an excuse. Yeah. Yeah, so that is amazing. Thank you so much for chatting with us today. And it's been so like energizing speaking to you about this. I really can see why you are a productivity coach now. Um, Just so inspiring. So thank you for joining us today and giving us some awesome tips as well for improving ourselves and our productivity. Um, I've absolutely loved today. So for those of us who want to find a bit more about you, where can we go? You can find me on my website, which is juliemillerdavis.com. Um, you can also go to Instagram and just follow me at JMD Productivity. Or if you're a Facebooker, um, Julie Miller Davis and the number 15 is where you can find me there. And um, LinkedIn is just Julie Miller Davis. I will, I will love to connect with any of you anywhere. Follow me. I'll follow you back, whatever. Um, would love to connect with anyone out there. And, and um, please engage. Awesome. And we also have Julie's details in the description below for anyone who missed that. So to everyone listening, please don't forget to like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using and we will see you guys next time. Thanks so much, Joanna. Thank you. You have been listening to Work in Progress, the personal productivity science insights podcast produced by Life Management Science Labs. 
Listen to episodes from LMSL's 10 Life Management Perspectives on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or other podcasting apps on your smartphone. If you enjoyed this show, please consider rating our show, sharing it and subscribing to our channel as it helps other people find it and us grow to bring you more quality resources. More of our work can be found on our website, pp.lmsl.net, where you can join our movement. I'm Joanna. Thanks for tuning in.